So let's start with string inverters and rather than explain a couple of things, I want to go straight to the whiteboard. So let's assume a couple of um, components of your system. So you have your solar array, you have your house with all the loads in there, you are the consumer of the power. Then we have the grid because you're a grid tight solar energy system. And depending on what you choose for your design, you might have batteries incorporated in your system as well. For now, let's assume that the batteries are, ne are not there. So let's just focus on the, the three components of your system. Now, traditionally, the solar panels will be connected to an optimizer. And let's use the color coding of DC-AC. So when I use blue lines, this is a DC direct current and the red lines represent alternating currents, AC. So traditionally, the DC power from the panels is fed to an optimizer, which uh, tries to get the maximum power output from the panels, right? And then from the optimizer, you would go to a string inverter. So the string inverter takes a whole string, so a whole group of solar panels that all produce DC power, uh, which already been optimized by the optimizer. And then the DC power goes towards the string inverter, and the string inverter inverts this into AC power, and then feeds it either way to the grid, to, to the loads, depending on how you've set up your system. So that's how a string inverter works. Now, nowadays, the optimizers are normally not separate units anymore, but they're already incorporated into the string inverter. Now, the string inverter is something which is often used for systems which I assume you will install. There's also the much larger version of it, which is a central inverter, and this is all normally only used on a, on a power plant, on a solar power plant, because a central inverter is a real large capacity inverter, and it can deal with a, a very large capacity of um, solar panels. And this is probably not uh, an option for you, but at least that you're aware of the difference between a central inverter and a string inverter. So now that we're here and we have these components drawn out, let's for fun, let's just consider a different situation. Let's consider that uh, you do not have a grid connection either way because you're completely off the grid or because there's a power outage, power cut, there's no grid available after a storm, etc. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. So you would have batteries installed in your system, you would have your solar array, and you are consuming electricity in your house through your loads. Now you would then connect your solar panel through a DC to DC solar charge controller, so a PV charge controller, to your batteries. And then you would connect your batteries through an inverter that converts the DC to AC into your house. So that would be, uh, this would be an off-grid solar energy system with, uh, with a battery storage, with a battery energy storage, right? And then it's most likely if you'd have such a system and if you would be connected to the grid, that you would install a battery charger as well. So the battery charger could charge your batteries if there's not enough solar power, it could charge your batteries with power from the grid. And then what often happens nowadays is that you would not have a separate battery charger and a separate inverter, but they would be combined in one and it's just called an inverter charger. But in essence, the inverter charger houses two very separate uh, functionalities. So this is a battery-based grid tight solar energy system with an inverter charger that could draw power from the grid if you want to charge your batteries and there's no solar power available, right? Or you can provide power to your house or to the grid, depending on how much power you have available from your batteries or from the solar panels. Uh, so a slight variation to this is that if you would not have this solar power, you would just have your batteries and your inverter charger, then it would be a grid tight um, energy storage system, kind of a battery backup system, right? So if there would be a power outage, a, um, a power cut, then you could draw power from your batteries and power up all the loads in your house until the power comes back from the grid, where you can then use the power from the grid again and recharge your batteries. So let's have a small excursion again and go online. I want to show you an example of an inverter charger and point out some of the different values of an inverter charger to you. So I am here on the website of Victron Energy. I am not affiliated with Victron Energy. And I'm going to their product section. So here we look at charge and convert. There you go, inverter charges. And let's select one. Let's go for the MultiPlus. There's different models there. So it says the MultiPlus is a combined inverter and charger. 
that's what we're looking for. You can already see when you look at the, the instrument panel, the user interface, you can see something, some LEDs for charger and inverter. It looks great. Let's download the specification, the data sheet, and let's go for the 2kVA and 3kVA 120 volts. So here we go, the data sheet for the MultiPlus inverter charger, 2kVA and 3kVA. That's great. Let's scroll down right away to the specifications. Oh, by the way, here you can see what we just uh, discussed before, right? So that there's um, three connections to the inverter charger. So you've got the shorter grid power, which is the grid, and it can be connected to the battery on the other side. And you can see uh, these are the signs for the uh, DC to AC or AC to DC. And then you've got your loads, right? So let's scroll down a little bit and let's look at the specifications because what I want to show to you is that this unit, which is an inverter charger, that really houses both the inverter and both the charger. And they both have their own specifications as well, right? When you look at the, the first model, the 12 2080 or 24 2050, you can see that it indicates the specific characteristics for the, both the inverter and the charger. So the inverter has a certain input voltage range. It has a continuous output, uh, the nominal output. You have the peak power output. 4000 and so that is for the inverter section and then the charger has different values so you can see that it has a quite a wide AC input range both for the frequency and for the voltage and you can see that depending on whether it's a 12 or 24 volt system that you have installed in your residence whether it can charge with 80 or 50 amps right which now it makes sense if you look up a little bit here the the, the model code the first value clearly is the voltage of the battery bank. The second value is the continuous output power at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last value refers to the amount of amps this inverted charger can charge your battery bank with. Right? So if you operate on a 24 volt system, you can charge your battery bank with 50 amps. Now I want to place one note there. I often value the small notes in these specification sheets because they can make quite a, a difference in how your system operates. Because if you look here at the charger section, you see that the charge current from the house battery is 80 or 50 amps, right? But you see the small note 4, which says that this is the charge current at 75 degrees Fahrenheit ambient, which is quite important. That is... 24 degrees celsius so that means that probably means the menu doesn't well the specification sheet here doesn't say it but that probably means that if the ambient temperature is higher that you can charge slower this is typically how these charges work so that was just an example of a real life inverted charger where we